Hey YouTube, it's Mr. North 14 and today we're talking about the Kingsford Steak Acre. Now we all know this is a dry age machine. It came, I came out around November of 2018. The first models had a lot of issues, a lot of problems. I had the same issue where I lost meat as well as many people. So basically what they did is they redesigned it and, and it came back out in February of 2019 and basically what they did is they redesigned the fan so they kept the same refrigerator unit redesigned the fan okay so the questions I got from my DM privately is people people ask me two questions they say hey Mr. North 14 my first question is how do you know the difference between the 2019 version and the 2018 version of the Kingsford Steak Anchor. And I simply tell them this. This is how you know the difference between them. When I got my unit, I'm only going by what I know and what I received. When I got my new unit in February of 2019, basically what it was is that the new units, or I should say, let me start, the old units, the fan units are all plastic all the way around. Okay? Now the 2019, the new versions, the fan units have a metal mesh on the side with little holes in it so that it can blow air out more evenly and disperse more over the back plate so that it doesn't freeze. So that's how you know the difference between the 2019 and the 20, 2018. The ones that didn't work are the 2018s, okay? So if you get plastic all the way around, okay then you know you got the 28 the 2018 fan model if you got the metal mesh with the little holes in it where the air can distribute out evenly over the back plate you have the 2019 version so answered that question now another question many people gave me is they say how long have you had your Kingsford after you know you got the repair one in is it still working are you still getting great quality dry age state and I can tell you yes I am now a lot of people might not be getting that all I can tell you is my experience with my 2019 model and I'm gonna call mine a 2019 model because I have the new fan okay so I don't know if that's really what what is making it the new 2019 model because they started calling that a couple months after a month maybe after they shipped out the February uh, replacement fan versions okay so I'm just gonna go with my my thought is I have the 2019 model okay so like I said the question that people have been um, have been DMing me privately is you know is it still working are you having any issues with it and the reason why they're asking me this is because I guess uh, steak Acre is selling these master models on eBay and they're really selling them for a good price. I seen one 2019 for like 215 and another at I mean three hundred and fifteen dollars and I seen another one at three hundred and seventy nine dollars and so people were like you know how do I know the difference you know does it need to say 2019 so yes it does need to say 2019 if it doesn't say 2019 assume it is the old broken 2018 models they trying to get out off their hands or you need to ask the seller is this the 2019 model do I have your word how do I get a refund if it's not okay or if I believe it's not so now to answer the question basically like I said I haven't been having any issues with this version of the steak anchor okay so I also want to tell you that Kingsford no longer owns steak anchor and it's under new ownership and what they have now is out the, the new Pro Series okay it's the Pro 20 and the Pro 40 and the Pro 40 International now they're supposed to be finely built perfectly built I can't verify that because I don't own one all I can tell you is if I was to gamble between the two versions and I really wanted a dry age machine for my home I would probably start out with the Pro Series and leave the Kingsford, oh, the Kingsford steak eggers ones alone. Okay, but okay, let's get to answering this question because I don't, I don't want to be too long on this. So, this is what I do 
when I first got my the second the 2019 version of the Kingsford Steak Egger. Okay, and this is how you keep them in good shape and uh, check them out and make sure that they work. So, when you first get your unit, you might have to screw in your fan. If you have to screw in your fan, make sure you position it at an angle so that the, the fan blows right on the back plate. Okay, the center of the back plate. So you're going to put it at an angle so that the fan blows on the center of the back plate. Hopefully they'll send you some instructions to tell you that. If not, ask them because you need to do that if the fan is not already positioned that way. Okay? So the first thing you do after you do that is that you take some soapy water, damp soapy water. You don't want it wet. You just want a damp soapy water rag and you're going to wash everything down. Okay, once you wash everything down, you're going to open up the door and you're going to let it dry. And remember, anytime you are with it, you, you're between roast and you're, you're doing different cuts of meat, anytime you're between, like you got a break, always open up the door and leave it open after you clean it with soapy water. Always leave the door open. Never close the door because you don't want any bacteria or anything to build up in it while you're waiting to put your next roast in. So you want to leave the door open or remove the door, whatever you see fit, but you want to keep that door open between roasts, okay? Now, so you got that done, you're ready to go. It's your first time using your Kingsford Steak Egger. You want to plug it up after you wash it down and do all the soap and you want to plug it up and you want to wait and let it run for three days. You say why you want it to run for three days because you want to make sure everything is working. You want to make sure that it's keeping the temperature between 33 and 39. You don't want to go below that and you don't want to go above that. You want it between 33 and 39. Okay, you want to make sure it's keeping humidity. Humidity might be low, might be high. It's, you're really not going to know about the humidity until you actually put the meat in. Okay, so don't worry about the humidity. As long as it's keeping that temperature 33 to 39, everything is good. You want to make sure that the UV light is a whitish purple. Okay, a whitish purple. If it's anything like red or like that, then it's not working. And remember, with UV lights, you can always do the old test of putting something white in there and seeing if you get that white effect, that, that, that party effect, you know. That'll tell you if your UV light is good. But it's going to be whitish purple. A whitish purple light does not mean it's bad. It means it's good. That it is working. Okay? So that's what you want to do in that three days. You want to make sure that it's maintaining temperature. You want to make sure that, that uh, the UV light is working. You want to make sure the whole unit is working properly and within specs. Okay? You do not want to open the door at any time during that three days until you put the meat in. Now, okay, you're going to go and you're going to put the meat in. I always go to Sam's and I get a strip and I get, make it about a 15 pounder. It's either 15.5 or 15.7. Sometimes you're going to cut it as you can see the roast I have in there so that it fits. So I cut off the sides evenly. So now it's probably about a 14 or 13.5 okay and you know you're gonna lose a lot of weight just because of the dry aging process so you want to go up there or go upstairs you want to get your meat ready and you want to uh, you want to tie the meat or you want to get the silicone straps and strap the meat because you want it to stay within that that big shape so if you can see I don't know if I can zoom up here you see the straps there on there that are right there 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 and it's going all through there those are silicone straps and what they are doing is they're keeping that meat that size where I'm getting big cuts of meat instead of little bitty cuts of meat when I cut it's keeping that shape and that's what you want to do you to your meat you want to wash it off you want to dry it and then you want to tie it with something either the silicone bands that you can reuse or get the string and tie it but make sure you tie it up so that it keeps that good steak shape okay let's zoom that back down a little bit okay 
So another thing you want to do is buy another device to keep temperature because sometimes the stake agar app acts up but you still want to know if it's not hooked up to the internet that you're getting that temperature so if you look right here right there it's a little white little hockey puck as you can see that's the other way it's called my ink bird thermometer that's how I'm also keeping a temperature I would advise you if you wanted to check it over the internet to get one that connects to your internet that one right there does not connect to the internet it connects by Bluetooth but if I wanted it to connect by Bluetooth what I would purchase is a gateway that would connect to that and then that would give me internet capability but you always want okay you always want a second way to tell the temperature in the unit just in case of emergencies because the app sometimes warns you that it has lost power or lost connection and things like that okay so we got the meat ready this machine has been running for for um, three days because this is our initial use of it our initial use and it's keeping temperature between 33 and 39 okay as fast as you can you want to put that meat in and close that door okay you want to close that door and for whatever time you got 30 days 35 days whatever you do not want to open the door okay so that means you have to plan ahead you have to know if you want to put two two roast in there or only one roast okay but whatever time limit you get don't show it off to your friends oh look at my new steak agar I'm so proud of it and open the door because once you break that seal of these master series ones then you're going to start to get ice buildup. And as I tell everyone, ice buildup is the killer. Okay, so let's say the machine is not brand new. You've used it a couple times. How do you start the meat? You start the meat the same way, but you don't need the three-day window. Okay, so while you're prepping your meat, you plug up your machine first so that it can get to temperature. Okay, then you're going to tie your meat, you're going to dry, dry your meat off, tie it up, and you're going to wait to, to the steak egg or get to the lowest temperature, a 33, okay? And then you're going to go in, you're going to open that door, and you're going to put that roast in. You're going to shut that door, and again, for whatever time you've got, 28 days, 30 days, 45 days, you are not going to open the door of that unit because why you're going to plan ahead you're going to get as many roasts as you want in there ahead of time okay and you're you're going to know what you're doing so that you don't have to open that door because once you open that door you're going to break the environment that this fridge has and you're going to get ice build up it might not happen if you open it one time but if you open it more than one two or three you will get the ice buildup, and the ice buildup will be the machine killer. Some people see the buildup, they unplug the machine, they let the ice melt, put the meat in the freezer, because once you put the meat in the freezer, it's going to stop the dry age process. You know, I don't suggest that unless the machine or you have a really bad issue where the machine just breaks down and you have to save the piece of meat. But I have not open the door so let's say my last roast okay I did the quick method because I'm on like on my seventh or eighth rotation I just washed the meat off strapped it up turned on the unit waited till it got to the lowest temperature then wait the three three days just waited till it got to the temperature hurt them threw my meat in now I had a power outage okay now my power was out from one in the morning to six in the morning Okay, so I really thought my meat was going to be ruined, but I kept calm and I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to break that environment because I do not want the ice buildup. Okay, and basically I got lucky, even though it was off for about five to six hours, the meat was still good. It, when, it, when, it, when it came back on, it went back down between 33 and 39, and it kept my meat a good um, I probably had like two yellow spots and then a right side of the meat that I cut out on one piece but that was about it that was the only thing that really concerned me but I ate it it was probably the best one I had out of all the rotations that I did you know so basically that's what taught me 
that I can't open the door. You know, you cannot break the seal of these master 30s. You can, but best practices is don't open the door. Because once you, you mess up that atmosphere, you're going to get ice build up. And when you get that ice build up, it's pretty much a machine killer. It's going to cause your temperatures sometimes to rise. Now, I had ice build up with this new 2019 model. And my thing was, this had messed up so many times, you know, maybe, uh, you know, you know, maybe it's time to test it and see if ice buildup hurts this new model. Okay, well, it didn't hurt this these new model. This new model that I have, it went. I went to 45 days with a big chunk of ice buildup. Okay, and so that didn't hurt it. But I'm just saying that in the machine I had previously, the ice buildup ruined the machine. But in the 2019 version, it didn't. So that's pretty much all I can tell you about you know keeping it maintaining it is just don't open the door if you do have an issue with the app unplug it count to five plug it back in everything should allow you to connect back to the internet and things like that if you don't just re reset it back up the app will remember what you had in it what day you were on and things like that but I never open the fridge to break the atmosphere. You only do that in the dire situations that you understand that you're going past four hours, like the temperature before it cut back on was probably 45, you know? So it's like, like once it get past 45 or something like that, you're gonna have to break that atmosphere and you're gonna have to open it, wash it down, and you have to freeze your meat until the power comes back on because freezing stops the dry aging process, but it still, you know, helps everything, you know, so that you can put it back in there to finish your dry aging process. I would always also suggest that you buy some type of power backup. So just in case you have a power outage, because that's the one thing that I say that it's not even the steak eggers fault. That's probably been the most problem that I've had my power go out in storms or something like that or it get too cold or it have a frost or something like that. That's the, the issue I've really been having. I haven't had any issue where it's been the steak eggers fault. You know, it's really just my power company and my internet going down. Okay? So this is Mr. North 14. Like I said, I hope these suggestions help you out. Like I said, do not open the door because that starts freezing. Prepare ahead. Wrap your meat when you first put it in there. When you, when you, I mean, tie it because it keeps the shape of the meat. Uh, when you first get the unit for the first time, run it for three days before you actually put the meat in there. After that, all you got to do is plug it in, wait till it get to the lowest temperature, and drop the meat in. You'll never have to wait three days after that again. It's best to do it that way because then you're not messing up the environment or open the door more than it should be for ice buildup. I hope this helps you. This is Mr. Nor 14. I'm out. Peace.